Well, hi, my name is Carmen Erna Jacobson, and I I like to write poetry and nonfiction. I work for Writers in the School. Um, I have one book published called Saga, and it's a book of poems that talk about um, longings and yearnings and in the present, past, and future. And I'm uh, recently working on my next book called Men and Fish, and it's about, it's a collection of uh, pictures from Cordoba, Alaska, and haiku that, um, that I'm very excited about, and it's, soon, it's going to be soon to be published. Uh, why are you a poet? I, I feel like I'm a poet by chance, and then it became by choice. I became a poet because I started playing with words. I, when I, when I started writing, I used to do journals and stuff like that, and I used to tell stories to my sisters and made up stories to children for children. But then somewhere along the line, I was surrounded by people that wrote in Mexico City. I was surrounded by poets. I was surrounded by writers, and I was fascinated by by the things that they wrote and did. I read a lot too in my in in my teens in. And then when I had the time, uh, I went to live in Alaska, and I lived in Alaska for almost seven years, and all of a sudden I had this time, and I started writing. So I became, I think, a poet by choice then there, because I had the time, and I had an incredible um, landscape that helped me uh, feel inspired by the, th the scenery that was there and also by the people that I met there. Um, when you when you look at topics that you've done and when you when you're writing on topics, is there something that you always return to? Something that's all that just sticks with you all the time? Mm, yes. Um, like, for example, the topics of of protests, the topics of you know, um, I guess I'm you know I read Simone de Beauvoir and there's something about her that. You know, it's like, I feel that there's still a lot of injustice in on, I mean, we live in the 21st century and I feel like there's still a lot of things that have not been, um, that we have not gone forward in, in our, in, in our way, the way that we treat women. And I just feel like, you know, that's a theme that I always go back to and you will see it in my writing. You will see, uh, you know, um, like the one in the veil in Saudad there's a poem about the veil and, and it's not the veil in throughout all religions you know it's it represents something or the you know um, so there are many different things that I go back to but I think the one that really I guess steers more emotion than anything else is still that we're living in the 21st century and women still have to have circumstances in the world that I'm appalled by that you know, we're still suffering some kind of repression or abuse. Okay. What, what is poetry to you? Poetry to me is the chance to get in touch with our human part, with our human emotion. It's, it's a tool that we all can use to communicate the way we feel, the way we see things, the way we, we, um, the way we relate to the world around us. Um, I think poetry is um, can be used in many different ways. It can be used in a journalistic way. It can be used in a in an informative way. It can be used uh, even for romance. I mean, poetry has had its place even in music. I mean, everybody has heard of Bob Dylan, and who wouldn't say he's a poet himself? I mean, there's m poetry has its place in many many different. Um, arts. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that poetry is dead? If I view poetry as a market, as something that in the market and uh, you know it's like saying you know this car doesn't run anymore or this car doesn't sell anymore I mean I think poetry is something different yes uh, the, it's true that there are books out there that have a big market yes it's true that you know, they will not s sell. But I don't think poetry's dead. I think poetry is still way alive and strong. 
um, yes, it doesn't have the same power that you know other things have, but but it has its place. And and I think also, and it it's sort of like you need to have a certain level of I don't know. Um, it, it's it's there has to it, but it, to answer your question, no, poetry is not dead. But if you see it from the market standpoint then perhaps more poetry hasn't found its place in it because maybe it hasn't reached the, the likings of the masses or, or something like that. But, that. but poetry is still alive. I want to talk briefly about poetry and politics. Poetry's had some rather historical moments. We There's been several poets that went out to, you know, protest rallies and they 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 raise awareness for uh, for actual topics and they, and they challenged ideas today in, in 2014 are there do, do you feel that there's any poets that are, are that are going out there and raising awareness today I think there are poets that are trying to do that I mean I just don't feel like they they're are out there and um in, and I would like to become one, at least in a book where I can put my protest of whatever I see that I feel is unfair or the injustice of what I see in our society. I would like to become one. But like um, I have met some who are protest poets. I just feel like we're, we don't, we haven't been able to reach, that our words can reach out there and create enough of a commotion or uh, a steer for a change yet. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about publishers real quick. You you self published your book. Mm -hmm. Can you give us your experiences on self publishing? It was um, it was a learning experience. It, it was something that it was not planned. Um, I started you know hanging out with people that wrote in the Houston community. I, I saw their books, I started learning about how they went about to create and put their material together and and I sort of started getting excited about it and then um, you could say that one of the mentors I think uh, for a lot of us people in the Gulf Coast community is Mary Margaret Carla and, um, and so she's a, a great uh, mentor for many of us poets in with her and through and through her experience I learned uh, and I met a lot of people that had written books and I thought I want to do that and and I realized that going back into my journals and everything I had enough material to put it together into a book and so learning the steps not just what you're writing but learning the steps of how to gather it how to put it together and then put it in a certain format and then put it in and choosing the the whole thing it was just you know it was really cool to see it's another art form one thing is your writing but put it into a book it's another sense of art and that was that was a lot of fun uh, to see oh I want it this way or I don't want it this way and working with my graphic designer and saying no I like this picture can you modify this or can you add this and um, it was really cool to see a different perspective of a book I mean, I, I read a lot of books in my when I was young, and but now to be able to put to create my book that was really a, an adventure, and now I want to do more, and I already have several projects planned. You said you were working on another book project. Um, can you give us just a little bit of detail on that? I know it's not released yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not released, but I'm really excited about it. It's a collaborative. Um, work with a photographer from Cordova, Alaska and uh, and I'm doing haiku, it's a haiku po uh, poetry book and, um, and I'm very excited about it because this is a place where I lived for almost seven years and when I saw his pictures I thought wow it brought forth a lot of the feelings and emotions that I felt at the moment that I was there and so I decided to create to come up with um, with a book that would sort of finalize the feelings that I had and what I and the beauty that I encountered there in Cordova, Alaska, with his pictures, and so we're we're in the final uh, 
process of getting it printed now so hopefully you guys will enjoy it as well is there do you think when when you're writing do you, are, are you afraid that there are any like dissonance between um between reading your work aloud and actually having the audience read it mm -hmm. you know that's um having the audience read it yes i think that's why i go to critique groups i go to as many critique groups as i can i think it gives it helps me get an insight of because I cannot be there and read it to them and explain to them where my voice comes from. So I, I'm always curious to see if people, uh, when I, when, because I wanted to, to steer a certain emotion, I wanted to, to create a certain sense of what I'm feeling. And sometimes I don't know if I'm really getting that. And so I go to critique groups and I get a lot of input from the people that I'm in the critique group. But yes, um, I think, uh, it, it's magic when you put something on paper and the people are reading it and they can totally relate to it and 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 they own it and you may have written it but from the and it's but at that moment they own it and it's the same thing that for all of us that like poetry that we like Pablo Neruda or that we like you know um, I don't know um, Mistral or other poet writers or Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz is one of my favorite writers also, that when we read it, we can own it, we can, there, it, it talks to us. And if I can do that, I'm, I know I've, I've, you know I've achieved something. When I, first got, when I first received the proof of my book, because it's the first thing that you receive uh, when you're making a book, I was very excited. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. It's like, first of all, to see your name on, on a book is like, wow, I did it, you know? And then to see, to, to the, it's, it's, I don't know, it's like maybe, some people say that in life you have to have a, a child and write a book. And then I understood why. Because it is like having a son or, or a daughter, or, you know, a child, because it is your words your design, your making, and it's like, wow, you know, so it was really an exciting moment for me. And then at the same time, there was an awkward feeling because the, when, I, when I got the books in and I had the chance to start selling them and um, I had my first buyer and it was like, I didn't really want to sell it. <laughs> And that was a weird feeling because when, because this is something like is yours, you know, this is what, what is written here is totally about the way of the, th the way that I see life, the way that I feel is very personal. And so you're, when you're, and then it was like a certain feeling like, ah, well here, I'm opening it up to the world. So it was an awkward feeling, but it, there was a special excitement. It's like, Having a, it is ha like having a child, you know. I can see why people say that in life, write a book, have a child, to have a sense of fulfillment. As a poet, what is your message to young writers and to young poets who are, who are just getting exposure today? To young poets and to young writers, I would say, um, read a lot. Uh, because to become a good writer, you also have to read a lot. Uh, I read a lot when I was a child. I wasn't thinking about, you know, writing. I was, I was fascinated by the people that I was reading about. I was fascinated by the stories that they had created. Read a lot and read what you like and get passionate about it and read a lot and see. And then eventually, you know, if you have something that has stirred an emotion in you or if you're going through an event in life and you feel like writing, write it you and just you know write as much as you can in a journal keep a journal of, of for yourself and then eventually put it away and then go back to it and and see and and sometimes I'm like I'm I've heard this from many other writers that you go back to it and you like wow I wrote this you know and, and it gives you a, like fresh new eyes and then eventually if you'd like to see it published or you want to make it in a way accessible to other people then modify it but first I would say read a lot read other poets read about you know how they write and what they do 
also go out to many different poetry venues. Is you have to do a lot of PR to meet other poets and and read their styles and also learn how they write and what what they do. There's a lot of good poetry in Houston. I met a lot of good uh, poets in Houston and. I'm very excited to be here in a community where there's a lot of support also. Poets here support each other a lot, and I'm very excited to be in that community.